Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd. And as we read the Freeburg Tribune and the Golden Bird and the Fact Freeburg's number one paper, this is This is the Police. A rather interesting little, well, I guess it's kind of a management sim, if you like, for police, but with a really interesting aesthetic and tone and quite a lot of depth next to them. Like, it reminds me a lot of the Westport Independent, but it feels like it's got a lot more depth than that. So, very, very intriguing indeed. We've kind of learned the basics yesterday, how to handle police and hiring and firing and dirt dirty jobs and investigators and diddly diddly d. so now I think we're actually kind of into the proper open game at this point. Let's go to work and continue trying to make half a million dollars if we can. Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn, especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside. How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Probably won't be seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. I've got to get out today. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie. If I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me. My family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run, and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I can't just give them back the money. That's not how the Mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. Oh dear. So if I agree to help Kendrick, then basically I'm agreeing to do work with the Mafia. If I refuse to help him, he's going to die and his daughters are going to be killed. He's brought it on himself, but it would involve pretty much condemning his family to death. But if I agree to help him then the same thing's gonna start happening to me, pretty much. If I refuse to... Oh, no, this is an interesting one. I mean, Kendrick's clearly a bit of a scumbag. He's taken a lot of dirty money and he's done all of this to himself. 
If I agreed to help him, though, then potentially me doing a little bit of work with the Mafia could potentially help me with my money situation. All right, fine. In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's be a dirty cop. Give him my phone number and tell him it's done. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice cozy barn, Frank. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kid's body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? Okay, gay, maybe I made the wrong choice. It's fine, you don't need to rub it in. While I was taking out the trash last night, I accidentally got into some poison ivy. This morning I noticed my feet were blistered. Doesn't look anything serious. I'd like to see a doctor just in case. No, no, you cannot see a doctor just in case. Go away. Get into work, you. They say it's going to rain today. I have a very weak immune system. I'm afraid I might start. No, go away. You have to stay in. Screw the lot of you. You're all flipping working, all right? Oh, I've got a good selection of officers today. This is magnificently good news. You know, I probably should actually have agreed to one of those requests and said yes, we're coming tomorrow. Because now I'm kind of a bit overstaffed for today and understaffed for tomorrow, which is a bit of a concern, but never mind. Also, why have we got Birch and Birch Jr.? You're both terrible. I'm guessing you're, you're Birch's son and you are utterly, utterly terrible. Dear, oh dear. Oh, no, wait, hang on. The thing is, when it says fire all black police officers, Stovall is literally my best officer. I can't fire him. Okay, I'm not doing it then. It's not happening. So, affairs. City Hall. Request to City Hall. Decisions from City Hall depend on whether they're satisfied with your work. You can send requests every five days. The fools in charge of the city may refuse outright or accept only some of your requests, so only ask for what you really need. Okay. So, improved equipment for SWAT. An increase in your... Ooh. I can ask for a raise for myself, or I could ask for more slots for... Asking for more slots for police is probably a good idea, to be honest. Yeah, that's probably the best thing we can do. Just get more police going on here. Ask for that, and then I can... Or okay, let's also ask for a raise. Let's see if we can go for both, because we should be doing pretty well. They should like us at the minute. Meanwhile, how's the late? Oh, the labour market is literally empty. There are no cops available for hiring right now. Dear, oh dear. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. Stovall I can get rid of for being too old. But if I do, let's... Okay, let's let him work today. Then we'll do it, all right? But unfortunately, Austin's kind of useless. We'll have to, unfortunately, fire her. Okay, let's do it. Let's play ball with the incredibly corrupt racist mayor. We're going to fire her illegally. This is probably going to go badly wrong. And at the end of today, we're going to fire Stovall and Robbins. Uh, didn't you fail to come into work at some point? No. No, I can't deal with you, unfortunately. You, however, I could fire if I wanted to for, yeah, not coming into work. You, you need to watch yourself, all right? Close for now. Remember, fire the two black guys at the end of the day. Oh, I feel like such a scumbag now. So, disorderly It's always Eddie's Burgers, isn't it? Bloody Eddie's Burgers. So, every morning, there's a dirty, piss-soaked bum sleeping at the cafe. The man refuses to go away and growls at anyone who approaches, scaring all the customers. Well, that doesn't seem like too big a deal, really. Let's send Forbes and Robbins over there. Two kind of mid-tierish officers. I think Eddie's Burgers is close by. And then Touch of Dionysus Liquor Store. Witness looked on from her window while an armed man with a stocking on his head into a nearby liquor store. Right. That's quite a big deal. So actually, let's send the SWAT in. Because we can. That's our first opportunity to do so. Right. Uh, we should send in Stovall. You're our best officer. Right. And we've got the SWAT here as well. We could also send... Yancey, you go in to support, and then we're going to send in bloody Birch Jr. Um, 
Yeah, let's send in Birch and Birch Jr. Four officers, two of whom are terrible, two of whom are really good, and a supporting SWAT team. And it's a very long way away as well. Like, that's going to tie up some cops for a while. But luckily, we're kind of over capacity today, so we can kind of get away with it, because we've got extra Yancey here. Uh, what's going on here? Fight in the residential area. Hot dog vendor reports he saw two Elvis impersonators grappling right on the sidewalk. They're swearing in Spanish and beating each other with microphone stands. Okay, I'm just sending two crappy guys. That's all I'm sending, all right? I'm not sending anyone else to that. I'm not sending Vandal, because if something bad happens, then I need to be aware of what's happening. Also, firing all the black cops tomorrow is the deadline. I know... I know I'm going to do it. As for my salary, I get an extra 1,200 weekly salary. Lovely. And as for disorderly conduct, offenders were caught, officers were unharmed. Okay, so I got the money, but I didn't actually get the extra officers I requested. Well, luckily, you guys... Okay, head back to the station in a hurry, please. And... Lovely. Um, then Azaki and Grant are coming back now. So the robbery. The shop has two exits from which a few people have already fled. Enter the store through the main entrance, sneak up to the back door. Drive a patrol car right through the front window. Um, yeah, I'd say sneak up to the back door. We want to sneak this up a little bit. And the stick-up man notices the police presence and he took the cashier hostage. He's holding a gun to hostage's head, shouting back off or I blow his goddamn face off. Meanwhile, the cashier is yelling in an unknown language. Quiet, Abdul, you're making things more complicated. That's very racist. Uh, silently take aim at the robber. You in the mask, shut your face and drop the weapon. I've got a SWAT team, and I mean, I get the feeling like this guy's not going to be intimidated. I've got a SWAT team and four officers present. I like, somebody must have a shot, hopefully. The robber grows visibly nervous. Don't shoot, please. I just need the money. I'll just take a little bit and go. No one was hurt. The cashier begins to cry. Shoot him. There's two is out of the shop in cuffs or in a body bag. I'll let you leave her upright, but only if you release the hostage. That seems reasonable. All right, then that puts things like that's a bit intimidating for a person who's probably very stressed. And the offender was caught. The officers were unharmed. The civilians were unharmed. Nice. Guys, get back to the station, please. In a bloody hurry. Right, what's going on here? A robbery in the city centre and an antique Chinese necklace was stolen from Bao Ling while she was on her way to the pawn shop. All right, well, let's send it. Oh, we've actually got some good people here. Yes, send everyone over to that. You proceed over there, please. Lovely. And municipal assignment. It's a hot one today. A lot of people are going for a swim. Last week, four people drowned on the beaches of Freeburg and the press was in an uproar. Please send someone to keep an eye on things. Uh, okay. I could send... Ah, uh, screw it. Send Robbins. He's not that good. Send Robbins down and that will be fine. And then we've got Ernest Fitzgerald, Countryside. Jack, this year's organisers of the Golden Beast Hunt suddenly changed the rules of their annual shooting contest. It now features teams instead of single competitors. Can you send me two of your finest marksmen? I'd love to do well in the competition. Um, no. No, I can't. All right, we'll come back to that. When some crappy officers get back to here, then I will potentially give you that. But that is not important at all. Oh, how did the fight go, by the way? Um, the offender escaped and the officers were unharmed. Oh, well, you weren't that good anyway, to be honest. Right, what's going on over here? Destruction of property at the Gallery of Modern Art. A gallery exhibition entitled Sex Operation. A gang of young people in ski masks forced their way in and began smashing the exhibit, shouting, We don't need this shit in our city. And I apparently could actually send a whole bunch of people over here to help out. Uh, nine, eight, come on, get some, get some people back to the police station, please. I need you back at the police station, and lovely. Okay, now we've actually got some people that we're ready to send out. This, I mean, they're not armed or anything. Like, I don't think we necessarily need to be that worried. What I need to do is I'm just going to send, yeah, one, two, and three. That's it, just those three. You guys can go over there. I think three police officers can handle this because there's no, like, talk of weapons or anything. I think it should be fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, over here, Birch is on his way back. Once Birch is on his way back, I'm going to send Birch and Birch Jr. over to the shooting competition. Oh, actually, I don't even need necessarily... Oh, no, Birch is on his way out. Okay, fine. Uh, in that case, I'm going to send you... Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this. We're going to send you Azaki and Grant. They're not, you know, terrible, but they're also not very good. So you lot can head over there, and we've still got some people spare. Right, the robbery. Tell me what's going on here. Ooh, we've got the new frames. Also, I'm not really sure what happened with the investigation the other day. The one with the the order of things. Like, I tried rearranging it a few times, but it never told me, like, I was done with it. So I'm not 100% sure here. 
So, what have we got? So, a robbery, she started just walking on, and she ended up not having a necklace. Yeah, that makes sense. Me and my husband got into a difficult financial situation. I was going to pawn the antique necklace from my family for centuries. As I was carrying the necklace to a pawn shop, someone ripped the bag from my shoulder and disappeared. I didn't have time to do anything, not even cry out. So he was a witness. A fender was on a motorcycle, grabbed the bag and then escaped. I tried to race after him. Didn't even time to see if it was a man or a woman. Couldn't see his face. He was dressed in a jacket like other bikes who hang around on street corners. So a bloke in a jacket grabs the bag, goes away. Definitely not a local biker. They're bold and have beards. This guy looked Asian, probably Japanese or Chinese. And I didn't see a weapon in his hand, just saw him grab the bag and ride off. So presumably he, yeah, he came up while she was still wearing the bag. Then he grabbed the bag and then he was off. Yeah, there we are. The sequence is completed. Oh, maybe I just didn't get the sequence right the other day. Intriguing. So uh, the suspect is uh, Yin Lin, a Chinese immigrant recently expelled from the university. Okay, apparently we're done with that. So your detectives have information on the whereabouts of the suspect. Sometimes there might be a number of locations to choose from. So as a result, we've now got our first instance of someone needing to be arrested. To carry out the arrest, two officers must escort the lead investigator to apprehend the suspect. If the lead investigator is not on duty, the arrest will have to wait. But remember that fugitives won't sit patiently until your schedule clears. And also remember that criminals will react in different ways. A frightened thief is likely to surrender as soon as the game is up. A brutal killer might want to see just how many lives he can take with him. With more dangerous criminals, it's safer to send experienced officers or even the SWAT team as you see fit. Well, this is just a thief, a thief kid expelled from university. Like I would say, probably, you know, Birch and Birch Jr. You got this. All right. This is a scared kid. All right. We don't need much here. This is 100% fine. And then destruction of prop. Oh, bloody hell. A lot of stuff is starting to happen. The offenders caught. The officers were unharmed. All right. So we took care of that nice and easily. And robbery. Okay. That investigation is ongoing. Now we've got... Vandalism at Atticus Tower. A guard went out for a smoke, saw a teenager, obscenities on the wall of the building. I chased the brat up a tree. You can take it from here. Okay, well, this doesn't seem like it needs much. Yancey, I think you can handle this on your own. I really don't feel like you need anyone else. Yancey, off you go. This is not a big deal in the slices. This is a kid up a tree. I think you can handle a kid up a tree by yourself. One more thing we need to do, unfortunately. We've shut things down for the... Oh, no. I think I forgot to fire all the black people, which is what I was supposed to do. Am I allowed to do that tomorrow morning by any chance? How did this go? And the offender was caught, and no one was at any risk whatsoever. Birch Jr. is actually stopping being quite as terrible as he was. Lovely. And we arrested all the suspects, meaning the investigators get better as well. Lovely. And as for the countryside thing, we did it, Boyd. We won. Did you? You were both kind of terrible, but all right. Marvellous. Now you're not as terrible. This is better and better. In fact, you've just actually got a really good increase. Excellent, you lot are actually decent. Although apparently you're taking a well-deserved day off, which you've just like let me know. Dear oh dear, how did the vandalism go? And the offender was caught, officer unharmed. Well, that strikes me as sensible. Lovely. And they actually want to end the day, by the way. A gun needed to fire all the black people. Oh dear. Oh well, I didn't fire the black people. Never mind. I hope the mayor's not too mad at me for that. And looks like tomorrow is going to be a long day, more like the first of a lot of long days. There's just too much going on. Okay, intriguing. And yes, indeed, I can't fire people from this screen. So unfortunately, I've kind of missed my opportunity here. So you guys were on today. You guys are on tomorrow. Yancey, you're going to be tired. Uh, Purdy's actually pretty good now. Cocky's still pretty good. White and Sabaki are all right. And you're also tired because you are both... Oh yeah, you're going to be... You're going to be very, very exhausted, aren't you? Fine. In that case, um, somebody could probably do with being told to come in tomorrow just as backup. You see, the thing is, someone's going to make an excuse and not come in. So I'm going to tell Forbes to work overtime just in case. So that will be 100% fine. Right, end the day in that case. And I have indeed felt... Oh, it's Saturday. Apparently it's the weekend. Do I work on the weekend? Apparently I do. Marvellous. So according to Dr. Waterbury, Thomas Blaine has a new form of schizophrenia. Thomas Blaine, the pregnant woman killer sent to a mental hospital. Mayor Rogers, not afraid of the competition. Mr. Boyd, there was a man here earlier. He left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on this floor? I don't know. I've never seen him before. I asked him his name, but he just ignored me. He was talking on a big telephone, you know, one of those portables. He gave me this envelope and left. Damn. Okay, let's see about this.
Of course, they could have shot them the second they took the photo, but I knew Kendrick and his family were all right. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My servitude to the Mafia had begun. I'd only been in my new position five seconds, and I already knew why Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is. A curse. Boyd. Good morning, Jack. I believe you just received my message. Who am I speaking with? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no trouble recognizing me. Like I was a member of your family. Even better than a wife, perhaps. A wife can betray you. No man is immune. I don't talk to people who don't tell me their names. Oh, Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our old age, friendship becomes rare and all the more precious. But of course, we must work with new people and find out new names. So if you insist, Jack, let us formally meet. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, Mr. Sand. And what is it you do for a living? Oh, you'll soon find out all about that. Well, you'll learn much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. You're a simple policeman no longer, Jack. Don't turn off your phone. You start today. Why do we have the feeling that he would have called me anyway, even if I had refused to help Kendrick? Eight in ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my colleagues hush up what they need to, two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. Eighty out of a hundred, eight hundred out of a thousand, I'm proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeburg, right? But now I just officially became a mafia whore. I'm supposed to be fearing for my life, for the lives of my wife and children. But the only thing I can think, what's going to happen to eight and ten? Eh, 7 out of 10 is not so bad. Now, what have we got? So, Fiendberg, who's tired. They say it's going to rain today of a very weak immune system. No, that's a rubbish excuse. You come in anyway. And some friend of mine asked me to help out with their animal shelter. They're badly short staff. Can I have the day off? Mm, yeah, but you have to come in tomorrow. Uh, okay, that seems reasonable. We've still got a good selection of cops there. That seems reasonable. Plus, I do like animals, so we're going to do that. That's 100% fine. Now, I'm guessing the mayor's going to be annoyed at the whole I didn't fire the black police officers thing. But first, so Yin Ling turned out to be a member of the gang known as the Red Masks. He could help you take down the gang if you made him an informant. Oh, this is the robber I arrested yesterday. Yes, I totally accept that. Ooh, so this is how we make big money. Gang hunts. There are a number of gangs in Freeburg, and that means there's bounties to collect. Some of the criminals you come across will be members of one gang or another. In exchange for immunity, they may be willing to give up their bosses. Okay, so we got this guy, uh, but we haven't got whoever these guys are. But we can investigate Ning He. Start to investigate him, sure. This way you can get your hooks into gang members higher and higher up the food chain, ultimately take down the boss. If you do arrest the boss, the gang will be finished, you'll get to claim the reward. Nice. There's also a reward for formally charging gang members. Whenever you arrest a gang member, you get a bonus, but your deal with that person is over. Don't settle for small fish, use the small fish to catch the big fish. So we could choose to arrest him for 2,000, or we could start to investigate Ning He. No, we're going to investigate Ning He instead. And that means we need to send in... Oh, you two are busy. Right. Um, okay, just send in Armstrong. And then... Uh, right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Close this for now. Close this for now. Okay, investigations. I need to get this investigation cleaned up first, okay? Apparently, if I just get this in the right order, it will sort itself out. So there's, like, only a certain number of orders that can exist. So that's fine. Let's just try every available order. Because I'm not quite sure what the order is supposed to be here. Okay, I've just tried what I believe is literally every viable combination of these photos, including leaving gaps, and none of them work. So as a result, we are going to archive this case and say screw it. And instead, we're going to reassign our investigators to the much more important business of bringing down this guy. So, Mole, you're our main guy, and Armstrong, you can help out. Lovely. In fact, eh, screw it, we'll leave to Brito just in case. So, proceed on that basis. You two get on with that. Lovely. Meanwhile, we've got some pretty good cops here now. We're doing pretty well. Actually, hang on. So, eliminate the Red Mask gang. Ooh. 
We've actually been asked to take down the entire gang in four flipping days. Blimey. She embellished a lot, distorted the facts. If you want to keep people from panicking, you need to take down the whole gang in four days. Okay, I can do that. I'm happier doing that than I am firing all the black officers. Uh, firing all the black cops. You swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep promises, we won't keep ours. Well, screw you. All right, I have some really good black cops. And I fired like one of them. I feel like I should get something for that. You now earn 10% more, 1320 dollars a week, lovely. And I can also hire one more police officer. All right, good. That is good news. Thank God a whole bunch of new people have decided to apply to the police. Brilliant. And that means I can now hire, uh, yeah, cop 15 out of 17. So that means, oh, it literally means one more. It's not one more per shift. It's one more full stop. So I need to pick a shift that needs more stuff. So actually both of these shifts are okay at the moment, but the weaker shift is probably shift A because you don't actually belong on shift A, do you? You're just like an extra, at least at the minute. Fine, we'll hire if we can get some good- Oh, you're good. Yeah, we'll hire you for shift B. Lovely. And then we also need one more person to join up with shift A and then we can kind of move people around. Yes, you also are good. Marvellous. That's some high level professional people. This is magnificently good news. Right. Close that, and then we've got a crime in progress. Oh, but it's a very long way away, which is kind of annoying. So a young employee at the factory got into a fight with the manager and is trying to push him into a vat of boiling chocolate. Wait, how hot does chocolate have to be to boil? It's not actually that hot, is it? I don't think that would actually kill you. But just in case, we should probably send some officers along. So this is quite a big deal. Uh, let's not send Purdy. Let's send Cocky. And let's also send in support... White. Yeah, that's a pretty good team right there. I swear I'm not intentionally making an entirely female police demand, by the way. It just sort of happens by accident. So, you're beginning the investigation. Lovely. So, Ning, he is a faithful assistant to Jin Yang, founding member of the gang. He's entrusted with serious jobs. Most valuable prize at home while he arranges their sale. Brings them to the Wise Dragon restaurant on the day before he's planning to make a deal. Okay, so the gang must have an immediate buyer for the necklace. So, he brought it to the restaurant the same night it was stolen. The restaurant, usually the restaurant is open around the clock. It was closed that night because of an important deal. Ning, he has a key to the restaurant and valuables are kept in a safe under the bar. I feel like we've learnt a ridiculous amount of stuff there. Yes, uh, but we don't have any of the other photos yet. So I think we just need to kind of leave that investigation happening until he comes up with all the rest of the photos. Uh, you're heading out to that crime that's way out here, I think, on that factory there. But we've got plenty of police officers for now. No need to panic. Off they get to the factory. And what have we got going on in the factory? Hello. Oh, we've got more stuff here. Yes, one report. Let's get them coming back to the station as soon as possible. Offender court. Officers unharmed. Everyone's coming back. And then we've got ourselves a carjacking. Parking lot attendant Dylan Burns reports seeing a teenager walking between cars, trying handles in the hopes of finding an unlocked vehicle. Before the attendant could approach him, the teenager found an unlocked door, shut himself inside. A few seconds later, the teen drove shrieking from the parking lot, greatly exceeding the speed limit. He fled towards the suburbs. Well, that's dangerous. Someone could be killed. Let's send... Don't need to send Purdy again. I'll save Purdy for if there's like someone with a gun or something. But I will send Forbes and the two crappy officers. We'll send a full kind of contingent, but only the crappy guys. Those guys send over that way. So Cocky and White, meanwhile, are on their way back. They're almost here. Marvellous. So we've got them back on board. And we are in control. Actually, oh yeah, we already shut down the investigation. That's fine. Can we do anything else with uh, City Hall at the moment, by the way? I'm guessing we can't yet. No, we've got another four days before we can put another request in. Over on the... Oh, hello, we've got to the carjacking. So, we've determined the car thief's location. We could overtake him and attempt to take him into custody. We'd overtake the offender and block the road. Or we could catch him. No, don't open fire. It's a, it's a teenager. He's probably going to panic and give up. Overtake him and block the road. Overtake the criminal and attempt to take him into custody. Block the road. Give him a chance to give himself up here. And... Offender caught unharmed. All right, perfect. Get back to the police station, lads. And we've got ourselves a host. Oh, dear. See this? This is what I keep Purdy back for. Hostage situation. A weeping child called in saying that someone was holding them against his will. They won't let me go outside. They torture me and bully me. I don't think I can keep going. I want to go outside and see Pete. The problem is this here could just be a child who, like, wants to go and play with their, like, dog or imaginary friend in the backyard. And they're, like, you know, he's overreacting and hysterical because his parents took away like a video game console or something. You know what, it's fine. We've got cocky if anything else bad happens. I'm gonna send the crappy lads with Purdy. Purdy will inspire them. But I don't think that's actually gonna be a real crime. But just in case it is, 
I'm going to send Purdy out. Like, there's no point, like, holding your police officers to your chest even when you've actually got a potential hostage situation going on here. Plus, nothing else is going on right now, so it's all right. Actually, it's been a bit of a quiet day today, to be honest. Uh, you lot are there. Meanwhile, what's this? A theft at a casino. We received a call from one of the angry casino patrons. He claims one of the casino girls that was hanging around his table lifted his wallet, which was carrying a couple of thousand dollars in cash, several credit cards. Casino security shoved him outside, saying he was drunk. The man isn't giving up so easily. Um, That is relatively important, but not so bad. I think two mid-level officers should be able to handle that. Off you go. Now, oh dear, the sand needs help. This is no good. Um, so, Jack, we're dealing with a moron who refuses to repay his debts, says that the police will protect him. I think it's time we show him whose side the police is on. So I could refuse, or I could send an officer. Is this actually going to get me money, by the way? Let's send you. You're okay, but you're still the weakest guy here, because I've actually got a pretty good selection here. You are going in, Feinberg. You can have the day of tomorrow or something, I don't know. So off you go to that. Uh, how did that go, by the way? And Joseph Lowry's mother wouldn't let him go outside and play until he ate his broccoli. Yep, as I suspected indeed. So I hope he got really nastily told off because he did call the police and we thought it was a hostage situation. So, you know, make sure he eats like double his broccoli or something. Feinberg goes over to deal with that. These guys come back. Yeah, quiet day today actually. Everything very much under control. Good. Theft here, offender court, officers unharmed, lovely skip. Let's go over to affairs, actually. No, not affairs, uh, investigations, in fact. Uh, you, apparently, do you still not have any frames for me? Maybe you need to keep working on this for a little bit longer. And that, I believe, is... Oh, no, we got one more last call today. A uh, crime in progress. So the parking lot exit, security guard stopped a suspicious van, asked to check the driver's membership card. Female driver reached casually for the glove compartment, pulled out a gun and opened fire. Well, you know what? I think we're going to send literally everyone because all of our best officers are here and it's the end of the bloody day. Send all of the officers. Huzzah! Because I believe the moment we hit nine o'clock, the shutters come down. And yeah, this is going to be the end of the day. Perfect. So off you go, I'm sending literally bloody everyone, no problem whatsoever. So, assault with a deadly weapon. Police cruiser has caught up with the perpetrator's van, so we could use the bullhorn to order the van to stop, we could shoot out the criminal's tyres, or we could try to run the van off the road. We'll order them to stop. Well, this person pulled out a gun and fired. This is... yeah, shoot out the tyres. That's... ooh. Is that dangerous? That could be dangerous. Ah, shoot out the tyres. Go for it. Oh dear. So the van takes a sharp turn and crashes through the window of a sex shop. A woman exits the vehicle, grabs the shop attendant and puts a gun to their head. Throw a rubber, se <laughs> Throw a rubber sex toll at the assailant. <laughs> Shoot the criminal in the head. Let go of the man right now. Look, I'm going to give them one warning. They get a warning. And... Offender court. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Beautiful. They actually gave up. Nice. Everyone goes home and because I sent four people, all four people get the bonus to their professionalism. This is good. I am doing a good job being a police officer. All right? A very good job. And Feinberg, oh, I didn't get any money for that. That just literally ties up one of my officers. Well, that's no good. Receiving stolen property. Aha! We've got the frames. It's flipping midnight. I should go home and get some sleep at some point. Okay, so open the investigation. We've got the frames. So we've got a photo of him jimmying open a door. And then him putting something in a safe or taking it out. And him entering the restaurant. So we probably... He enters the restaurant, he probably jimmies the door to get into the basement, and then he gets the stuff, right? No, apparently not. Uh, hang on, normally the restaurant's open all the time, but it was closed because an important deal was going down. So he had to break in first, and then he walked in, and then he did the safe, right? That seems more reasonable. But he has the key to the restaurant, so therefore he didn't need to break open the door. There was no need, he has the key. Well, this is really, really interesting because, yeah, uh, once again, I've tried every single possible variant. And, like, the thing is, I know that he didn't need to break in because he has the key. Like, that's a clue. So, I don't know if I just have to wait for more frames to appear or something because... Or maybe it's because it's, like, midnight so the detectives, like, can't do the work even if they wanted to. I, I honestly don't know. It's like, I've tried literally every variant, and he goes inside, he goes to the bar, and he opens the safe, and then he leaves, is the the order. But, I like, I, that's not working. So I think I just need to wait for, like, another frame to appear, 
that means I've got one of him opening the door with a key, because I know he's got a key right here. Like, I'm... Yeah, I'm a bit confused. I'm just going to take that one down, because I know it's not right. I'm just going to wait for... to see if maybe more... more stuff appears. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure I know how this works. Okay, now you, you have to work tomorrow. You have to keep working on this case because we need to crack this case in four days. So all of you are working tomorrow. Sorry, but you are. I'm just taking more detectives on this. More bloody detectives. Maybe it's because I put, like, not a... Okay, tomorrow, I'll put more detectives on this case. It'll be fine. Now, do any of you need to work? So you're going to be tired tomorrow. But other than that... We should have what is a pretty good selection of cops for tomorrow. So I think everyone else can just have a rest. Especially you, poor old you. Yes, you're 100% fine. Feels a bit harsh to tell the detectives at 2am, by the way, you're working Sunday. But never mind. So investigation into Francis Kendrick could resume. Racist gangs run wild. And second tower to be built in Freeburg. Lovely. Off we go to work. The people of Freeburg have built up a tolerance for the petty horrors of modern life. You'll never see crowds gathering around a beaten passerby. Folks rarely even slow to gawk at a car accident. And street theft doesn't turn heads anymore. Been a long time since people got worked up about stuff like that. So when I ran into a troubled crowd on the way to work, I knew there was something serious going on. Something bad enough to knock these people out of their daily rhythm. And we're talking about people who would step over a corpse if it was blocking the door to the coffee shop. But apparently all it takes is a bunch of leaflets, or spreading broken glass across Main Street, or releasing a couple of hundred rats in the ice arena. The mysterious figure taking responsibility for these strange acts goes by the alias Robespierre. Nobody knows who he is, what he wants, or what all this adds up to from the buckets of lard spread on the sidewalk to the front door of City Hall covered with ostrich feathers. But this strange cross between childhood pranks and cheap theatrics has got the people all worked up. Everyone understands when some Freeburg crook satisfies the basic human need to rob and kill. But when someone steals a lion from the local zoo and locks him in a cell below the courthouse, the people start asking questions. Myself, I kind of like this Robespierre. It's not just the pranks he's pulling or his green bull's head emblem. I just like his funny nickname. Robespierre? Really? Who does that make me? The Marquis de Lantanac? I don't think so. In the old books about revolutions, I fancy myself the old gunner who goes off to war with a bag of damp powder. Or maybe the innkeeper who tops up the beer kegs with mop water. Hmm. It's something to think about. Alright, we got a coup to deal with. Nice. And apparently something new. I've got myself a deputy, Martin Stett. Okay, and Belcher says she was up all night, and now I have this ring in my ears. Can I take the day off? Uh, yes, actually, we've got plenty of detectives, but you're coming in tomorrow as a consequence. And Forbes, some friends of mine asked me to help out at their animal shelter. They're badly short-staffed. This is the second time in two days someone said that to me. I'm deeply, deeply suspicious. Yes, actually, you can, because I could actually have you get a bit of your um, your energy back anyway. So you can as well. I was up all night, couldn't sleep. Now I have this ring in my ears. Can I take the day off? Uh, no, I need you. You're actually good. Sorry, that's that's not good enough. Sorry. You know what? I'm going to call it apart here. But you know what? We're going to do a little bit more of this because I'm really quite enjoying this game. Yeah, a bit more on Saturday to come, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd. And this has been This is the Police. Thank you very much and goodbye. I've got plans. Dad, this, this is my plan. International Peacekeeping Force. I'm here to bring peace. It's a tsunami of monkeys. This is literally a tidal wave of monkeys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be here. Don't be standing here. Okay. Oh, you want more peace? Here, have some more. Have some more.